and now it's time for me to move to the next slide which is the most interesting slide of this uh, presentation where i discuss about two imperative mental models uh, when you approach learning smart contracts or when you develop smart contracts let's begin the two mental models that i that basically comes from my blog which you might see on my site uh, the blog was named another reentrancy attack what's stopping us from being a better smart contract developer uh, the two mental models seem very very simple so don't forget experimentation while learning solidity don't forget security while developing solidity but why why these two mental models so let's dive in deep now uh, forget about everything look at this screen right now i i think my screen is visible so what you see at the screen right now is a list of smart contract attacks since 2016 right uh, if you come from this is the first uh, slide first image so if you come from all the way top to bottom you will see the first atta attack happen on uh, june 17 2016 it was the dow attack and then you come all the way down to may 10 2022 and then you come to this image which is which brings you to february 9 uh, 2023 which is just a uh, last a uh, few weeks ago right uh what's common in all these attacks is the fact that all of these were done because of just one single bug which is the reentrancy bug right now a very obvious question that comes to mind that it's been 6 or 7 years since the first attack happened the first reentrancy attack happened on the dow attack uh why are developers is still repeating the same mistake again and again till 2023 it's been 6 years i mean what what could be the reason uh is this attack very complicated to understand and not repeat no it's if you understand solidity you will understand this attack very well and not repeat it uh are people not aware about it no that's not true people are aware about it they have been tweeting about it since 2016 almost every web3 developer now knows what reentrancy attack is uh are there not enough resources online that's not true either there are a lot of blogs articles youtube videos tweet threads are uh, written by a lot of good content creators including me about reentrancy attacks right so what's the reason i mean if there are resources if this attack is not hard to understand uh if this attack can be prevented using testing and auditing why are developers is still making this mistake now this is a very open ended question there, there can be a lot of multiple answers multiple narratives to answer this question but after talking to a few developers because when i saw attacks i think uh last year in december when i wrote this blog i was really concerned that why after 6 years we are still repeating the same mistake that leads to a lot of uh smart contract hacks wipes out millions of funds that never comes back uh so what i did was eventually went out and talked to a couple of smart contract developers i i talked to my friends as well who are fellow developers and what i found was the first reason that i found uh was lack of experimentation so smart contract developers when they start learning smart contracts uh for example if you just saw my presentation now you understand that smart contract development is a big deal right so it, it stores money it's immutable so it's pretty scary right so what happens what i found was uh when smart contract developers or or web2 developers start learning a uh, smart contract they realize that it's very scary for them right uh the first reason was uh it's immutable in nature so you get one single shot to get everything right that's the mindset that they're coming from uh, it's open source in nature so your smart contract or or my smart contracts that are on production level right now anyone if you can go and see the smart contracts anyone of you can go and see the code that i have written or maybe find bugs in my code that i have written right so that that basically expands the attack vector uh smart contracts are the codes that can store money your mobile app might not be a code that is store money but a smart contract are able to store money right which basically makes it very risky uh fourth reason was uh rapidly evolving solidity language so solidity is not sta stable right now it's moving on at a very fast pace it recently launched is its version which uh, which is 0.8.19 uh and it also introduced new features so it it becomes very difficult for developers to stay up to date right now all of these features all of these reasons basically is what makes smart contract developers not experiment with their code or not experiment with the new features quite often what they end up doing is they consume a lot of content uh they read blogs they read uh youtube uh videos they watch youtube videos they buy courses they learn how to do things but then they don't do anything about it they don't go and actually write code on testnet or they don't experiment with new features lack of experimentation is what 
makes us bad developers in solidity because we are scared to do uh, experimentations on production, but we don't even do it on testnet. Now, what happens is almost every smart contract developer might have heard about reentrancy, right? They ha they have read blogs, uh, read uh, was the YouTube channels about what reentrancy is. But how many of us actually went and wrote a reentrancy bug in testnet and tried to do that attack? Almost none of us that I talked to, right? So they know how to read things, they know how to learn things, but then they don't go and experiment it. Which is why I say don't follow the tutorial loop uh, because if you end up consuming content, it's a never ending process. You actually have to go out and do something with it, with the knowledge that you just gained. Because unless you do that, you, you don't really make mental models of how to avoid re bug if you, if you have never seen a re bug live. So if you have just read about it, that basically makes you a bookish developer who just follows the rules. But attackers are not like you. They keep experiment, experimenting every day. And that's how they, they attack smart contracts. So the very first reason that I found why these attacks keep happening, why developers are repeating the same reentrancy bug since six years and not stopping is because they don't experiment. They, they learn, but then they don't go out and do something. I mean, for example, right now in Web3 or smart contract development in general, it's, uh, it's a common practice to not reinvent the wheel. Uh, it's a common practice to just fork some contract, some well audited contract and use them. Uh, for example, you have all used Open Zeppelin, I believe. Uh, you have all used some templates of well known contracts and you just don't experiment on your own or you don't write your own code, which is good, which is basically means that you are being very secure. Uh, but then it has an adverse effect on your learning curve. If you are constantly copying code, uh, from well reputed companies, from well audited companies, because almost every code is open source, so you can just go and fork any code. If you're doing that constantly, you are not really learning how to, how to experiment with things or how to build new things or build new features or probably better features than what is already existing in the market. So I'm not saying to go out and do this test or do, do this experiment with your contract on production, on mainnet, but doing this on testnet or even trying to replay these attacks or trying to understand how specific things about solidity work, really diving into deep, not just going through the content of YouTube or medium blog, but actually doing things is what will make you a better developer. And probably then we will have less attacks that are from re bug at least, uh, at least then I'll have a good sleep because right now it's very concerning why we are repeating the same mistake again and again. Uh, so yeah, the first mental model is don't forget to experiment when learning Solidity. It's very easy to learn Solidity from, because when I started, there were very few resources, but now there are many resources. So it's a lie if someone tells you that Web3 is a new space and there are no resources, that's a lie. Uh, there are a lot of companies that are working on creating content. Pesto is creating content on Web3. Uh, so there are a lot of resources, but that won't be enough unless you take that learning and actually do something with it, right? The second uh, mental model is don't forget security while developing. So if you really look into the market right now, there are two different jobs uh, in Web3. First is smart contract developers. Second is smart contract auditors. The smart contract developers develop smart contracts, they write the code. Auditors then review the code and find uh, bugs or vulnerabilities, right? This sort of differentiation, difference in the job basically made a mindset like, if I am a developer of a smart contract, I security is not my job. My job is to only write smart contracts and deploy it on the blockchain, which by the way is a wrong mentality. Everyone who is interacting or developing a smart contract are supposed to uh, consider security as a part of the development. So right now, if you go and ask an average developer uh, of a smart contract, what exactly do you do when you develop smart contracts? Chances are he will reply that, hey, I, I write on some, some brainstorming sessions. I make a document, I convert it to code. I check for gas optimization. And then I write test cases and deploy it. They don't even know how to use security or any tools. They don't know how to use Slither, for example. Uh, even if they know, they don't understand what attack vectors are possible with the smart contract. Uh, your lack of understanding of security in Solidity might lead you to writing contracts that have a lot of bugs and will eventually make you a bad developer whom no one will trust because your code has bugs and that will affect people's money. So uh, the second uh, mental model is to not forget security while developing smart contracts it's actually to include security as a part of a development process. So you write a function, you test it out, then you use it, you use some tool or, or you use 
uh, some sort of mental model to track what all can go wrong in this function. It doesn't matter if it's completely accurate, but you need to have some sort of idea about smart contract security to write good smart contracts. Second reason why you should also, also understand security is because unless you really understand what smart contract security is, you cannot really talk to the auditor who is auditing your code because the auditor might say something that, hey, this is the bug, and you will, you will have no idea of how it's a bug because you don't know security. So knowing about solidity, smart contract development, knowing about different tools is all good, but then you should push yourself a bit ahead and learn about security because that is what will put you uh, in the category of better smart contract developers because there are a lot of smart contract developers now uh, who has just started developing smart contracts and they are able to write smart contracts very well but they don't know what security is so yeah if i can leave you with the two mental models those will be don't forget experimentation while learning solidity don't forget security while developing solidity code